Leather Rock. Welcome to my channel. This is a story time about how angry I am because there is a certain grouchy woman, grouchy old woman who had the nerve to yell at me because I was digging through my own family's trash cans. And I don't see where it would be any of her business because she does not live here. Do you see what I have in my hand? This is just a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of a sample of my own mail addressed to me, letters that I had written home from Los Angeles, going back since the 80s, that were thrown out, and I found in the trash. A couple weeks ago, I happened to find my cassette tape po collection, at least half of it, and a bunch of my music CDs that happened to be in my trash. And ever since then, I have been monitoring my trash cans because, hello, any of my things, I think I have a right to take them. And so this woman decides to get in my business and she decides to yell at me, embarrass me in front of a whole bunch of people telling me to get out of the trash. It wasn't her trash. It wasn't her business. I said, excuse me, this is a family matter. And uh, there is somebody then, you already saw the video about how somebody went on a rampage and kicked over a bunch of these trash cans that had, again, a whole bunch of my things, a whole bunch of letters, postcards, birthday cards to my mom. If I was lucky, see, one good thing is I wrote in all kinds of different colored stationery, all different colored envelopes. So I was able to find an envelope with its thing so tightly torn up that it isn't it funny that now there is also family medical records and financial records, but they weren't torn up. Hello, any identity thieves that wanted to put a duck through our trash and could have found out my mother's social security number, the other person's social security number, everything they could have found. But no, only my things were torn up in tiny little pieces. And so this busybody little old bitch that is a well-meaning volunteer for some of the uh, churches around here, she decides she's taken it upon herself to try to clean up the neighborhood. How noble of her. Gee, where was she 20, 30 years ago? You don't clean up a neighborhood by making the people that live there miserable, by embarrassing me in front of other people when I was trying to safeguard my possessions from the local neighborhood crackheads. You know how many times I saw people that were yelling at me that, again, weren't people whose business it was? Crackheads and heroin junkies that were yelling at me because I was digging through, maybe it was their favorite trash can that they like to uh, dig through. Maybe that's the thing. I don't know what it is. But, uh, so she's getting in my face. I'm yelling at her to mind her own damn business. She also got probably the building in trouble when code enforcement was here, asking questions, wanting to know if I had keys to that terrible, awful alleyway where all the junkies hang out and stuff. And my family made sure that I didn't have a copy of it, just so that I wouldn't be trapped in the alley because they already found one dead body there. By the way, since then, everything has been uh, locked up and stuff. So that's one good thing. But now, turned out I have to be very, very, very vigilant about all the trash that's coming out of my building. Uh, and the reason why I have been posting all those faceless videos and why I have delayed even doing my hair is because unfortunately I'm being forced to try to find out why my things are being thrown out. It's really sickening to think that my things, which are part of my memoirs, how would you feel if some very special letters that you wrote home 30 years ago were deliberately being thrown out, not just whole pieces of paper, but deliberately torn up, shredded, as if your very existence was trying to be eradicated. Uh, in some of the comments, there are some well-meaning people that thought this was a postal issue. It has nothing to do with the postal mail. The mail got delivered safely here 20-something years ago, 30-something years ago. The point of the matter is somebody who hates me and has an obsessive hatred of me, someone who I know is bipolar and has a lot of issues, somebody who hates me and hates Trump and doesn't like women and doesn't like female authority figures and who would wish he was the only child. He destroyed even letters, uh, even birth birthday cards and Christmas cards that I handmade from my mother. All of my mother's other cards, they were not touched. Mine were torn up. So I have been spending hours wherever I can. I have been spending hours digging through wherever I can to try to find my mother and father's effects, things my father left behind, things my mother left behind so that they don't get destroyed. I found 
piles of newspaper clippings pertaining to my father's charity work, pertaining to my mother's Boy Scout stuff, torn up, torn up or at least thrown out. I found packets of family cat pictures. His ex well, <coughs> excuse me, the excuse for throwing out some of these things was, oh, they were stuck together. Well, if you have a pile of real pictures stuck together, they very easily pull apart. And now I heard there was talk that there was mouse turds and cat pee on them or something. There was none such. And mostly it was my things that were being destroyed. And this is just really, really, really unnecessary. This was just so unnecessary. And I'm just, I'm sickened that how can a person be hated so much that a person finds her things when they, my mother, what I think happened is my mother is a very tired woman. She's 83 years old. She has chosen to delegate certain responsibilities and one of them is digging through boxes of her things, for, or scouting things, for her keepsakes, and they are being stored in an area that I do not have access to, in an area that only the other person that lives with us has access to. And because only he has access to it, he can go through it at will. And he's been taking things and anything he deems trash, he's been getting rid of ostensibly to save my mother the heartache of reading over negative things. He's a person who believes that when once people are dead, they're dead, so that's it. So even though, even things pertaining to all our family cats, their medical bills, letters that the doctors sent, condolence letters on behalf of our cats, or letters welcoming us being a new customer client for them to treat our cats, those were thrown away. Things about Hobbs and Tabby Boy, things about Ace being put to sleep, all kinds of things that were never supposed to be thrown out. That is sick. That is sick. And the things of mine torn up, torn up. I'm lucky that some of the things were still in envelopes and they'll be easy to place together. But I have a whole lot of things which are literally, it's going to take a lot of effort to fix things. And some things it was too late for me to find. I hope none of you know what it's like to be hated and to have somebody who has mental illness and they will do this to try to erase you from the family. In my memoirs, if I hadn't been vigilant, so yeah. And uh, now the code enforcement is putting all kinds of pressure. All these organizations that are trying to take care of homeless and hungry people, they're having a special uh, magnifying glass on them because if you're encouraging and enabling the bums which the city's trying to get rid of and kicking people off the boardwalk except for the tourists oh I heard they don't even let you smoke anything on the boardwalk now I don't know but that's what I heard so yeah how would you like it if somebody yelled at you when you were digging through your own trash protecting your things how would you feel bitch better mind her own damn business she is not helping and the people who, she may have her heart in the right place, but the people who she is uh, aligning herself with, they're scumbags. But they're charming scumbags. And she's drinking their Kool-Aid. Hey. I, I will talk to you later. Hey. Goodbye. Excuse me. Hey. Excuse